Oh, it's nine o'clock. We'll call the meeting of the Floyd County Board of Supervisors, <coughs> regular meeting, October tenth, two thousand seventeen, at nine o'clock. First item on our agenda is to approve our agenda. I'll move to approve. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to approve our agenda as presented. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And motion carried. Item two: public comment. <laughs> we have numerous people from the press or the media but no comment item three review action regarding approval of september 23rd and 24th 2017 meeting minutes i've read through both and i didn't see any um anything online so i'll move to approve both uh september 23rd and 24th meeting minutes i'll second the motion Okay, we've been seconded to approve the minutes as presented for September 23rd and 24th. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item four, review action regarding approval of claims. Review the claims, I'll make a motion to approve them. Okay. And I'll second. We moved and seconded to approve the claims as presented. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item five, review action regarding board approval of MBS Family Farms Iowa Department of Ag Land and Stewardship application of anhydrous ammonia storage installation at Norwood Pork LLC, 3030 180th Street, Charles City. And we have a <clears throat> part of your packet here and a application <clears throat> we looked at a couple weeks ago with some questions. Love that you have a staff report in here. Any discussion, Jeff? You're you're not here. You're not here. I'm here. not here for that. Um, okay. I do have some comments that and i think larry that's why you're here too that you would like to to speak in regards to this um when i look over the application and i'm looking at the letter from leslie it just seems like there's a lot of um uh discrepancies that i really am questioning um they talk about that the um, property that it's going to reside at is norwood pork's own farm operations and that According to the letter, as long as the chemicals will be used only in the farming operations of that property, that property is only under two acres. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't believe that you know we should be making those kind of statements, or if that's true, this, this would be um, the place to locate this. Uh, again, this is a commercial sized tank um, being used for a farming operation and I'm just concerned about the location of where this is going to be put. Um, the aerial shots also that was attached did not show really the full aerial shot. This is the one that they had provided us. And then in the meantime what I did is I uh, went down to the assessor's office and was able to get better aerial shots so I made copies for each of you. And what this one does, where the other one does not, um, is show, two, here we go. And Larry, if you want to look at this too, but the, the aerial shot that I had the assessor's office provide me yesterday shows the distances between three different locations. Um, one of them is, um, I think, Swartzkopf's property. The other one, Larry, is yours. Here's a better one. Uh-huh. Okay. Swartzkopf would be 1900 Larry's would be 1500 So, yeah. Yeah, but one of the points that it said in here is that then on the IDOL's application, it talks about there's 500 feet on the actual, um, is they need a scale plot plan complete to a distance of 500 feet from the proposed installation noting property lines. And I'm not seeing anything that notes the property lines, which I know that Larry's property is butts right up against 
the actual Norwood Pork site. Right. So, so it here. just seems odd to me. Uh, there's our property line right there. Right. I agree on that. 15 feet, is that what I No. So the property line for his property is right here. Yeah. Right. Is that what this, this, this is? This is his green? home. Right. <clears throat> is that 315 feet? Is that to the property line? That's what she's saying right here is this. This is 315 feet here, 340s. This is the actual location of Norwood Pork site. Okay. That's, the That's this line and this line. Okay. But then the dimension. Right. And then Freiburg's property is right here. Right. You know, so again, it's either the application, the way it's stating it, um, I have concerns on how to read it and interpret it. So I just wanted to bring this up, I guess, as a board, so that we make sure that we're not approving something um, that doesn't need to be maybe reevaluated. Um, I don't know whether we need to get you know the county attorney's office involved on this, have them look it over and give us a recommendation. And again, um, the other concern that I do have, um, I've driven by it at night. And again, if it was a commercial site, I'm sure there's a lot more security around it um, for lighting. Um, there's very minimal lighting there. There's two lights, and they're both on the front side. And it isn't really very well lit, but let alone having any lighting back where the storage tank would be. So, Larry, if you want to go ahead and share, too, some concerns. I know you talked to some Yes, I'm Larry Freiberg, and my folks is lad goes right up to that. Our dividing line, I can stand on the terrace that is on the, the line. I can reach over and touch his solar panels. Our property goes right up next to his. And uh, there's two other problems that's having that tank there. One is the animal welfare. When I heard that they were going to put a 10,000 gallon tank next to a building with 2,500 animals in it, I couldn't believe it. And I have an example here what happens. I don't know where this was, but uh, first of all, the security, the meth is made from anhydrous. That's the main product. And the theft of that stuff is getting out of hand in the farming community. And this guy had a cattle lot and he had an anhydrous tank next to the cattle lot, and some thieves tried to break in and get some uh, anhydrous. They broke the valve, and overnight, 12 cattle were found dead with a total morality of 64 cattle dead. They had to euthanize them because of the uh, effects of that anhydrous on the animals. And it says here about what a huge problem this is getting for farmers. So if that, if that tank had a a rupture or somebody tried to break in there and get stuff, that would kill those 2,500 animals in just a matter of minutes. It'd suffocate them. It burns their lungs off. So when I heard that, now I've, I've been a security guard at Pfizer and Zoetis out here for 21 years. My job was to protect the animals. We had a research farm out in town and to protect our product from being stolen by drug dealers. When I heard this, I couldn't believe it, that anybody would even suggest putting a tank that size next to some animals. So we have an animal welfare issue. And there's absolutely no security out there. And if you look at what's recommended by the government and the state, uh, especially in commercial, it should be very well lit. It should be fenced in and then, so you can't drive up to it. And it should have uh, security alarms to the police stations and it should be in a high visibility area. In other words, where there's people driving by. Mm -hmm. That's why out here on 14th, it's by the highway, and out here FS is where people can see it. And this is getting to be a huge problem for farmers, and if they leave a nurse tank out in the field in the spring when they put anhydrous on, they will find the hoses cut the next morning. Now, the thing about this anhydrous, the drug dealers will not take a transport out there and steal all that anhydrous. They want a steady supply. And what they do, like in those uh, nurse tanks, they will cut those hoses and get the residue out of them because it goes a long way. And they will find a tank that they can tap into, and they'll go back weekly and get their supply and try to cover up their tracks. So this is going to be a huge problem. And that would also 
compound the danger to animals. Uh, just the drug dealers out there trying to get that anhydrous out of there. And uh, it, it's that road, nobody goes down that road after 10 o'clock. And it's isolated, you can drive right back in there. And for those reasons, those two reasons, that should be rejected because of the animal welfare and absolutely no security out there. And even the farmers that have those tanks, they recommend having it where you can look out the window now and then and see if somebody's stealing that stuff. It's going to be a major problem. And also, like I say, it's, it's pretty close to our, we're going to burn our CRP acres. Now, I that stuff is flammable. In fact, that big uh, uh, chemical plant down in Waco, Texas, that's all they made is anhydrous ammonia. And that blew up and demolished everything around it and killed seven people and injured 100 here a while back. That stuff is flammable. Like I say, our property line, I got to stand on that terrace reach over and touch his panels. And I got a map here showing how close it comes to us and how and that road down through there is isolated at night. And back through the years, I used to ride with the police and the sheriff now and then, I used to help them out. And we would always check those tanks if it's on their route. Like if they go to Rockford, they check the tanks or if they go out on the other, or nobody ever goes down this road back here. So there's a real problem and I would say that the animal welfare would shut that down out there. And I'll submit this map, and uh, this is just one example of what happens to animals. Thank you. Thank you. Luckily, you, <clears throat> I mean, you've written us a letter here, and you've talked to Randy. In the county trails. Since the county trails. Um, from a zoning perspective, it, I mean, it's agriculture, so by our ordinance, I can't, I don't have anything for it, so, I, I mean, I have stuff for it, but I don't have anything to hold a hearing public, a public hearing on it, I have nothing to deny it with, from the zoning. So. I know, I did try to reach, uh, the gentleman that you had in your staff report, um, tried to yeah. I haven't so been able to talk with him yet. Because okay. I was going to check with him too and see what he said. Mm -hmm. okay. Also, I might add that uh, I'm sure the insurance company did not pay that farmer for loss of his cattle. If he, because he set that there, and I'm almost positive that if something happened out there, the insurance company would not insure those pigs. And I'm sure that if the right people knew this, animal welfare, they would not let that tank sit next to a building full of animals. And there's a lot of laws. I had to contend with those when I was a security guard. A lot of that is regulated. Of course, we were a commercial facility, but we were regulated. We had that research farm, and that's all regulated by the state and the federal government on this animal welfare thing. You cannot jeopardize animals in a situation like this. There's got to be somewhere, somebody would deny that because of the animal welfare. Where, I don't know. Just for clarification, that was part of our zoning ordinance and that was before Leslie, but that was a pretty contentious cause. There, in agriculture, agriculture exemption, there are no setbacks <clears throat> so with an ag exempt. I mean, they can, they can put that solar panel right on that property line. They can put a building right on your property line there with the ag there are no exemptions and that's what the difference is right. between mm -hmm. what you're talking about a commercial operation and this i'm not making excuses for it but just pointing that out no but i think that's a valid <coughs> point you know and i think right. supervisor q and um, this you know there's we've had enough you know come across our desk that that again i think these feel like they're they're loopholes you know that the way everything is written, and like Leslie has said, she's done everything according to, you know, what you have as defined legal rights that somebody has to do that. I, I'm almost to the point saying I, I almost wish that we could reevaluate how these applications are written so that it's a little bit more um, careful to try and maybe prevent something like this from just being able to be installed and located at a location where it is um, be a little bit more clear about property who owns the property 
because again, I kept seeing Norwood Port, that that's where it's located and that everything is going to be used for that property. Well, it's not. You know, that tank is going to be used in thousands of acres of, of crop ground. Um, is there another location? But there's, you know, unless we could go back and say, is they've got other land, could they not try to relocate this into another location? He does have a lot of land south of us. He bought the old Trowbridge farm. It's uh, as you go across 18 towards Country Club, he owns all that north in there. But you don't take a you don't take a, a 10,000 gallon tank to set it next to your house. Why would you put it next to a, a 2,500 animals that are in a confined space? I mean, somewhere along the line, there's got to be a law that he can't do that because of the animal welfare. This keeps coming back to our zoning ordinance, which was Mark and I were here, but I don't know if anybody else was long before Leslie. But, but it's a very valid point. You know, it's, things have changed. And how long ago has our zoning ordinance been? Three years, four mm -hmm. years, five years? Mm -hmm. You know, right. things, have, things have changed immensely. And right. That's animal well, rights. I big. don't see any way to deny this under our present <coughs> zoning ordinance. And that's my concern. Perhaps. You know, we need to revisit that, and maybe maybe people will look at it different than they did three years ago, four years ago. Right, on the local level, you may not have anything to do, but I'm sure there's state laws that on this animal welfare that you can't put animals in jeopardy like that. And the supervisors, I think, have authority to do that on their own. To say, you know, it's, it's going to jeopardize those animals in that building. You have authority to turn it down. You don't need a law. It's just common sense. I, I put up, I put up with that out there to Zoetis. Uh, we had those animals are protected. Believe me, they could come in and shut us down at any time. Again, you're you're comparing a commercial operation to an ag operation, and the same laws don't go from one to the other. But he can find a better spot in that tank in my backyard for one. We don't want those druggies out there in our neighborhood. He's got. There's, he's, he's got land down there, he can put it on, and there's high visibility where people are driving by and whatever. But you just can't put a 10,000 gallon tank next to a building with animals in it. I did uh, reach out to Sheriff Kirks too, and uh, just ran it by him, you know, to see what his thoughts were from you know, his perspective. And his comments, he said, you know, it's unfortunate right now, you can really almost buy that cheaper than what you can make it. So he said, is it a potential risk? Yes. You know, they're, they're not seeing a lot right now, necessarily in Fort County. But I just, I wanted to let you know I did reach out. I also did talk to, um, is it Kurt Teeter at the uh, fire station? Trump State Fire Department. Yeah, just, you know, from a hazmat even perspective. Mm -hmm. And he shared with me again, definitely has concerns. Isn't yeah, that what our topic so. is this afternoon at our hazmat? Okay, Let so there you go. Meeting this afternoon. So I did bring that up with him, and um, he said you certainly could talk to a lot of people that would share the same concerns that I was sharing with him yesterday. So he, again, it's it's frustrating to me right now is because I think everybody feels it is the right thing to do, not to allow that to be put there. But, you know, I think what we need to do is find, you know, what can we, as supervisors, um, what leverage we have and, and be able to, you know, either take a stance and see whether we can push back, have them maybe try to find another location for it so that we're not necessarily stopping them from, from putting the tank up. Is that an option? Um, so I'm just wanting, I guess, some feedback from you on that. Did he put it on his application that was going to be next to an animal building with 2,500 animals in it? There's not, but again, there's nothing on the form that asks that question. I still should have been. And that's why I'm saying, right. I, I feel like, you know, we need to do some longer term changes on maybe how these applications are written and, and making sure maybe that they're asking more questions. And, Technically, he needs our, even if we denied this under the zoning, under the Iowa State and our zoning ordinance with ag exempt, 
could he move beyond if we denied it and put it up here? In that, in the, I think that probably with the county attorney would be the person best to answer that question. I, I would agree with uh, Supervisor Jason that there are certain discrepancies in the in the application that give me cause to uh, to delay it at, at, the, at, at best. Uh, these are some valid reasons that have been brought up here today. Um, seems like hiding behind the everything is exempt because it's agriculture um, right. just doesn't weigh out compared to the threats of the, to the local residents in the area. Yeah. And like I said, you know, we're on point. Maybe maybe it's time we relook at that zoning ordinance. You know, things have changed in three years. I don't. Years. I don't think you're going to be able to change anything when it comes to the ag exempt because. I know COZO has tried to tighten some of them regulations and it, it doesn't go anywhere. The state won't even look at it. But those animal welfare, that covers everybody. That covers agriculture. They're not exempt. You can't, uh, they got humane societies that cover raising animals, horses. Nobody's exempt from that animal welfare. Raising dogs, there's a lot of loss to that. And I, I don't know if you could deny it because of the zoning issue, but you could I possibly de deny it because of the location and the animals would be an option, I would think. Or your concerns yeah. with that. And I'm sure, almost positive, insurance companies have a lot to say about that stuff. For example, when I was security out here to Zoetis, the insurance company paid part of my salary because I was keeping the place safe and they paid, they give them a big discount on their insurance for that facility. They had to have roving security guards out there. So the insurance company, I'm sure, could deny him insurance out there to have that sitting next to those animals. Those insurance companies got to say so because if you don't do what they want, they just cancel your insurance. They won't insure you. I don't know whether he's ever thought of that or not. Item 12. No. The public is favorable to vote across the application that the zoning group gives us for the county group recommendation that we discussed by the county group. <clears throat> but Randy's Rachel. <laughs> I wasn't in that conversation. Sure. So from their perspective, in other words, when when the county attorney reviewed this, what were they looking for? Was it mostly just making sure that in regards to notification it, that you're following? When you know, I went comments? down there to talk with Randy, it was on specifically holding a zoning hearing in regards to idols number 12 on their application for the public hearing in minutes right we can't hold a public hearing however talking with idols it does justify their number 12 right if on a letter from me zoning administrator is presented saying there was no hearing held this is why and this that is the result why there's no minutes for that so that was the only thing that I talked to yeah. Randy about concerning the zoning because, again, the agricultural exemption through our ordinance, I can't hold a public hearing because of that. So that was specific to just that topic. Just so so to I zoning. guess I would say we haven't really proposed anything else to the county attorney right. on re-evaluating this entire application, how it's written. Um, Again, the location, the, the concern that we've got as far as risk, um, I guess that would be my that would be my recommendation right now is that we don't rush this, let's do the right thing. Now, there's nothing said, nothing mentioned through all these application stuff about the animals. Nothing. That's the most important thing. 2,500 animals is a lot of animals. Well, this 
is for review and action. So, yeah. so I will make a motion um, to hold on the application approval for the anhydrous ammonia storage installation at uh, Norwood Pork, located at 3030 180th Street, until we have further review by the county attorney to look over the application itself, um, the location, the risk, and uh, see what advice that Randy or the county attorney might provide us. You call your motion said hold. Do you want to call that table, or do you want to <coughs> hold it? Let's, let's table. We'll table it. Table it until until we hear back from further advice from Randy. Uh, or I think Rachel. Right. I, I think uh, based on the information that was held at this hearing. Uh, I think that's a logical and, and prudent step. I'd second the motion. Okay. It has been moved and seconded to table the motion to approve this application for an anhydrous storage tank until further advice from our county attorney's office. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. And I, will, I can have that comment. Okay. I'll get out of your way. Thank okay. you very much for your time. You bet. Thank you. Uh, item six. Review action regarding the second reading of ordinance 2017-3, setting dates for the third reading and waiving third and fourth passing out 2017-3, which is our dangerous dog ordinance. We had a hearing. Two weeks ago. Two weeks, Two weeks ago. ago. Yeah. Do you have any? No, I haven't heard from anything. Anybody? And I've not heard a word from anybody. Is no. I haven't I either. Know. I mean, I think of anything. The only comments that we've talked about before was more, you know, encouraging that we're actually moving in this direction. So. Um, Cindy, you have any knowledge of the auditor's office receiving no. anything? Okay. <clears throat> so we would. S would you like to have a third reading? That's always a discussion. Just allow more people time for input. Is it something you'd like to do? It's pretty easy, but uh, I know it's been talked about in, in the cities a lot. And it it seems right. have a lot of right there. Yes, it has. The city of Charleston is going through it right now, and I think they just had an incident in Rudd. Had, and didn't I hear yeah. part of it that they're going? They're going to go Perfect. by this ordinance. Yeah. Was that? Yeah. Okay. I was thinking they had their own. Well, they do, but it's the state code. Oh, okay. It's nothing extra. I mean, it's minimal. Well, I would move to uh, approve the second reading and, and set a date for the third and, and final reading of the ordinance. And that would be yeah, our next like, regular meeting on. Give a date. 24th. Yes, the 24th. September 24th. Whoop. October. <laughs> yeah, we're in October. I know what time. I know what time. Um, 9.30. And I will second that. Okay. Been moved and seconded to have set a date for a third reading. What was the date? October 24th. October 24th at 9 o'clock. 9.30. 9.30. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay. Item 7, review action regarding abatement of taxes on building on land owned by another partial 1228200080. Zero owned by Junior Vance. And we have a letter in our packet from Gary. <laughs> Outlining the scenario here. Yeah, 
uh, this particular one, when I was reading it, um, I mean, it made sense, you know, that getting um, our county assessor's recommendation on this. And it made, my question was, was the building moved to somewhere else? Then they're going to pay taxes in a different location? I don't know anything about it. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, here it's an added to what Nathan owns and he's paying tax on this building now. Okay. Yeah. $18. So I'll make a motion to go ahead and approve the uh, abatement of the taxes of my gene line balance that was due payable for 2017 and spring of 2018 and the amount of $18. Yep. Second. Okay. And we have seconded to abate the taxes on a, on a building on land owned by another partial one, two, two, eight, zero, eight, two, zero, 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 eight, zero, zero. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, item eight, the review action regarding employee county employee and county owned vehicle parking policy. <coughs> so we have that, which we have talked about in the past. And <laughs> over and over and over again. Dusty was in the process of getting some Quotes. signs made mm -hmm. for various ones, but what are the changes proposed in the policy? From existing. The spots along the north side of the north parking lot are going to be public with yeah. two handicapped spaces. Yeah. The handicap moved from the south side, yeah, south side, north side. Yep. The north, excuse me, the south side of that parking lot are reserved for sheriff vehicles only. This parking lot right over here, the south parking lot, we're going to call by employee and permit parking only, and it's mostly for county vehicles and whatever employees and the parking lot over on the other side you know formerly known as the David Cole is for county vehicles county and employees, employees. Right. only the lot across the road is for public parking so in all reality the only real changes are the, are the parking mm -hmm. lot right down here the addition of these two, four or five okay. public spots, and moving. The handicap spots were always mm -hmm. there. It's just moving one of the handicap spots from the south side of the lot to the north side, closer to the door. Has the policy been? Uh, discussed at a department head meeting to our employee yeah. now on We talked about it at the last department head the other day and <clears throat> everybody seemed to be in agreement. And this has, we also talked about there's a change, going to be a change in the way the north door is accessed with some parking hours. Excuse me, the, the, door, the door hours are going to be Public door hours are going to be from five minutes to eight. Seven fifty-five. Mm -hmm. It's going to open five minutes early, five minutes before eight for the public. Before that, you can access it. Employees can access it with a key card for an hour before. Yeah, seems like <clears throat> that was with an addition of a. And in case there's a Pardon meeting, me, a no, public right. meeting going on in the building prior to that or after hours, right. it would be open up and available to the public to, right, to as enter, they do now. Right. Yeah. And you so really, this is just for the parking. Right. The mm -hmm. building is a separate yeah. issue. Yeah. Um, and this takes effect, or I guess she was writing this to be in effect for October 16th, is what Gloria made the mm -hmm. comment. 
Yeah, I think that was something to do with Dusty and getting some signs together. Adopted the 10th day and shutting it, is, it back yeah. on the 16th. Okay. And you, these are the list on the back. Mm -hmm. Counting the vehicles right there. And again, those are just notes and comments because that's going to change on a regular basis. <laughs> I would move to approve the uh, county employee and county owned vehicle parking policy. Yeah. And I will second. Okay, I moved and seconded to approve the Floyd County employee and county owned vehicle parking policy. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. So, where's our dusty guy? Where's dusty kind of What's the number? Four digits, shouldn't it? One one zero zero. One one zero zero. Better. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> one one zero zero. Hey, Janet, this is Doug. Dusty around. Okay. We'll see you in a minute. Thanks. On his way up. Kate, I was uh, reading your article and I was thinking when people come visit me on the farm, I usually put them to work in some form. <laughs> <shoving me> <laughs> so, had, what did you had do? Things like, did you get. <laughs> That's funny. Twisted or anything like that? No, uh, I didn't. I didn't get pulled into any any work. Hey. I'd be useless. I grew up in the Des Moines metro. <laughs> Item nine: discussion with the county engineer about secondary road activities. I got nothing. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See ya. I didn't get my time sheet in yet. I'll bring that up. Oh, then your inbox later. Yeah, I'm like. <laughs> um. Let's see. Where are we at? Uh, let's just go with the big project. Uh, T26 north of Marble Rock was supposed to start this morning at 8 o'clock paving. Really? And because of the rain, of the rain forecast, yeah. they decided to pull the pin before they started because they didn't want to get a couple, uh, couple hours into it and then all of a sudden cut it short. So where are we and where are the, plant? Uh, the plant is set up, if you go where the old Rockford golf course was, and that little gravel road that's on the curve there, you're going to go east and then down on the corner, there's a sand pit there or quarry yeah, there or whatever. The yeah. Yeah. So it's there is what they're, it's set up. It was calibrated yesterday. Um, supposed to start paving today. Um, but because of the rain, you know, in a couple hours, and it depends if it was going to hit or not. It was kind of, they want to take a chance. And I didn't want to, you know, they didn't want to risk it. I don't blame them. Because you get about three hours into it, and then all of a sudden we'd have to start putting mm -hmm. right. burlap on it. Yeah. South end. Well, very at the, very at the south end, um, and they're gonna start coming around those curves there. Um, past the first couple houses, and then get past the dead end or departures, and the dead end where uh, Brian Landon lives down the end. Mm -hmm. So they're all aware of it. So we're gonna fire up tomorrow at 7:30, and 
they're thinking about a mile a day, depending, that'd be a good day, so I'm hoping that they actually fall into that, that'd be great, six miles, and then you got some other sides, you know, the side road there that goes to the um, to Sonic, and then at the north end there's some other handwork stuff to be done. Right now, tentatively scheduled for October 18th, which would be next week for longitudinal. Obviously, that just falls into whether the paving continues on at a regular pace. That might get pushed back a hair. Because the chance of rains, you know, Friday. It sounds like tomorrow and Thursday should be okay to keep going, which would be good. Um, we get keep moving along is the best thing. So, so in a couple of weeks, I'll be happy that the concrete will be down. <laughs> Everybody's kind of antsy. I know it's been a long time. I was talking to Rachel because she's along that stretch too, and you know she's it's been a long time. I thought, oh, it's just a glorified gravel road is what it's been. So, right. uh, but I understand that. I know it's a it's just part of. It'll be nice when it's done. Is all I keep thinking. So, do they work over the weekends? It just depends. Um, if they're falling behind, depending on what they have on other projects to wrap up in other areas of the state that they have other projects going on, they may work Saturday. Sundays they're not allowed to work unless an unusual circumstance, but. I'm not sure. Right now, it be, I mean, it looks like rain Friday, Saturday, so... It shows right now, Saturday, Sunday, yeah. 60%. Hopefully they days. pushed it back that they could go Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right. nights, that's the three days up there. Yeah. Um, but we'll just play that by ear. It's going to be Mother Nature and all, and then, you know, tiling may happen, you know, but that just pushed back a little bit too, probably. Mm -hmm. And then we got shouldering, and then, uh, you know, I'll give you, if you had a chance to drive it, I mean, this, we did the permanent seeding ahead of time, which... There's grass growing like I've never seen grass grow before. It's green, green, green. So, so that's good. We're making progress. Good. We'll get paid. I mean, people were worried it wasn't going to happen, but we're there. So, um, we did some shouldering work. I guess for the local crews, we did some shouldering work on D60 uh, east east of the Clark's Road uh, road that goes towards Nashua. Is that because you just we had a bunch of dirt to use up and. We figured let's use it up and make some bigger shoulders because that there's a lot of roads out there that the shoulders are just narrow, and so to be able to do that, you know, it's it's safety. I mean, in the long run, and we have dirt to use, miles to use it. Um, right now, they went up to a uh, bridge up on Ocean Avenue, which we had some weight limits put on it to the point where we may be closing it because of the substructure is bad. Uh, Sent the bridge crew up there; they're working on encasing, replacing some of the bad pile underneath the pier in the middle. And encasing that with re re rebar and encasing the whole thing with concrete. So hopefully we can go from three ton weight limit to maybe something a lot better for that case because the, the superstructure isn't bad. Oh, sure. but there, is it closed or not? Because it was on the news this morning saying it was closed. We closed it because uh yeah because we had to reroute the water around. Okay. So reroute the water around on the roadway um, to get the water diverted so that we can get in there and do some stuff. Uh, so that that's gonna be a couple week process. <coughs> there's no good way to work under a, an old bridge like that. It's kind of just see how we go and, and with the it depends. You know we were dry, 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 and now we go to do it and we get rain, rain, rain. So I don't know how that. You know, that's just how it works. Uh, Murphy's law. Um, I know up until last time, maybe I visit with you guys. I mean the gravel roads were not great shape. I mean a lot of washboardy. Um, they were blading last week, blading this week. So we're out there trying to knock down the washboardy. The rain helped that case because if you don't have the rain, as I said, what's tied in is tied in. You don't want to mess that up because anything you do with that three days later, you just lost what you just wasted money on trying to blade those when you don't get any, you don't gain anything. So with the moisture, that definitely helped. Uh, so they've been all doing that. Um, check plans for the quarry road north of the ethanol plant. Um, those were submitted last week. So that is on schedule for a January letting and constructed next year. Um, we're in the process right now. We sent emails to Valero. There's a short stretch right where the north truck entrance is, where the old county home was, that there's only 33 foot of right of way. And everything else has 45 foot. And for some reason, I think that was just ignored because when we did the rise project getting to there, we didn't need that little stretch. And now we're going to the, the north and south. We need that extra little bit of right of way. And Verison back in the day when we did this project donated the right of way. And so we're working with that. And it turns out it's 0.7 acres, which amounts to like three or four hundred dollars. So we're in the process of working with Valero right now to have them donate that 12 foot for a 200 foot long stretch because to get the turning lane in there, which would be a 200 plus foot turning lane, and you're going to remove those pine trees that are there and la la la. So. Working on that right away right now. We should get that accomplished pretty quick and continue with the 
Final plans are due. Do turning lane on that side? On the west side? Yes. Okay. Yep, there'll be a turning lane there. We did a glorified, I think it's a 200 some foot long turning lane. That's got to help. It'll help some, but I mean, the technically it's a turning lane, not a parking lane, so, you know, it's one of those. Right. Yeah. Um, and so the final plans of those are due by October 24th, so those will be submitted by the end of the month, basically. So we'll have the right of way hopefully accomplished there and then the final design and then that lighting will be in January and constructed next year, so that's good. Um, everything as far as next year's project for the bridge project on Frankie's is all done right away, has all been taken care of. Um, I don't think there's anything crazy there. That lighting is continuing as such and then that will be constructed next summer. Um, well, that's about it. Avenue. Oh yeah, uh, we had a we had a request for um, no passing um, area over there on Zinnia, just north of the the major bridge where the curves are, uh, but close to north of 180. And it does not meet the requirements. And basically, what it is is there was a couple close calls by the landowner who lives on the west side um, regarding almost getting hit as it's implementing going down the road. Over, that's why. Yeah. And the sight distance for that stretch there is. 2,000 feet, which is way above needing anything. Mm -hmm. And as I had Duane over there visiting the landowner, as it was going on, someone came flying by, and they're sitting on the edge of the road and just going like really fast. Let me just say it that way. <laughs> and we're Duane was just like this, and the guy stopped, came back, and he basically I won't mention it. He just basically said, he goes, "What?" And he says, "Well, we're standing around the edge of the road, and you're going by here like a beat heck, you know? It's going fast." And he just set of profanity and sped off. So it is what it is. So I mean, if people aren't going to drive safe and break the rules or whatever, I mean, if there's implements going, I know we can't do extra signing. Signing is not going to stop people from breaking the rules right, that are there exactly. anyway. So yeah. the guy understood, and I said, if it doesn't meet the specific requirements to put in no passing area, then we're not going to do it just because. So you have, you have that's why you have those requirements. So that's what that was. It was over there measuring that. I would just go there on Saturday. Yeah. Just one more. Yeah. Um, the only other thing is the email I sent to you guys last week about the signing for the collection site. Um, yes. The only comments that I got was actually from Karen, because I sent that to Karen too, and says, well, if, would it be smart to just say, let's just do begged only if, if at some point the collection, if the landfill's not going to do boxes? And I said, well, here's the deal. Is my signing on that says it will be boxed or begged only. Change the verbiage a little bit that, you know, this is a... Um, Anyway, says not box or bag shall be rejected. Just, um, this side just is, for clarification, I do have a landfill meeting tonight. I see that cardboard is on the agenda again. Okay. Before I print these, and then maybe you can just feed me back if there's anything change. Because then, because my thinking is, is if we allow it to be boxed, I can easily just go X off the box or cross it completely off, you know, once the signs are made. Um, and the other thing I just stated in there, um, that anyway, says not box or bag shall be rejected. This site is for rural residents of Floyd County that have a rural 911 address. Because that's what we kind of determined as the reasoning people can bring. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not a, a, a whatever. And it's, yeah. I, that would be the only verbiage change um, at that, that waste items must be boxed or bagged. Not the tarp thing anymore. Not that mm -hmm. the people come with a truckload of tarp stuff that isn't boxed or bagged. It's whether we wanted to keep it at boxed or bagged. And to me, leave it at that now. Until, and maybe I'll just wait until I here if there's any major concern. If there's not, I'm going to go with that signing, but I'll wait till next week maybe. Unless yeah, you guys I think have I any... talked to Alan Paul a little bit yesterday and asked him that technically there's nothing out there to recycle cardboard. Yeah, right there's, there's, there's a... Yeah, there's just the, the one... But he said, the, you know, we could work around that. And, and his comment was, is to, you know, he feels kind of bad for Karen. She's kind of trying to enforce it, trying to do the right thing. Yeah. And, and is getting some negative feedback, unfortunately. Yeah, and it says car cool. paper or cardboard flattened boxes must fit flat inside the bin. Must be cut down to fit. It's not just thrown in a box. It's got to be flat because there is that paper thing out there. But he, but his comment was that if it was getting to be a big deal, you know, wanted something, he could he could supply a dumpster or something. A bigger one or we something. We could like put that something another on one. the side for yeah. cardboard if you wanna. Uh, providing recycling. I mean, it, it's allowed in that small bin that's there, but there's not a lot of space in that in that one. I mean, it, it really is small. 
So I mean, we could worry about that too, as far as a bigger bin for that. But to me, that's more of the garbage issue, you know. And, and to me, we got small recycle things and, and all that. So I, I'm indifferent. I'm, I don't know how I'm probably leaving a box and bag right now. And then if we make the science, who cares? And then down the road, we switch it to say, as of when we get to that point, saying, okay, right now. The landfill is going to stop accepting it. I'm assuming there'd be a grace period there, but I guess I can't speak to the landfill. Well, the whole entire happened. landfill thing came from the fact that there was a mandate. I mean, it's ten years old. That landfills were supposed to reduce what goes in the landfill by twenty five percent. Sure. But but somewhere along the line, everybody kind of forgot about it. Now, once it's coming back. Coming back. Yeah. But I, I know. I know. Maybe I'll wait till next week. I kind of threw that email at you guys, just thinking, okay, and. And Karen just thought that that if it simplifies it, just doesn't make bag only. I mean, that would make it really simple. But I don't want to limit it, I guess, because people are so used to the box and bag. And if the landfill's taking it, what's the difference? As long well, as it's a like contained unit. Yeah, I like that we're doing this, and I think it's good that we're proceeding. You know, to put some signage out there, but it does make sense. And if you've got a meeting later today, we, it's you not that bad that it's been waiting this long. We can wait another week or two, and then by the end of the month, hey, these right. are the signs I'm doing, and right. You know, I just wanted, that's why I figured I'd give you guys a courtesy email, at least you guys are aware of it and stuff, so. But that's all I really got, you guys. Um, get ready for winter, I hate to say that, but that's coming. Shh, don't talk about that. Um, I don't think so. What do they say they're doing the night survey? They have to go look at um, every single sign out there. Yeah, the I noticed that too. With that, and that hasn't started yet, but that's going to start, and when that happens, I'll let the sheriff's office know, because basically every year every other year we have to do the nighttime survey um and we do half the county one year and then the other half the other year so we kind of rotate so we're not doing it every two years have a four it takes a couple of weeks to do it but that's required by our we have a resolution that was passed up here that basically talks about that and that that's the inspection we'll do and there are seven different options to try how you do your nighttime inspection and, and to me the one we passed is to do with the nighttime survey. I mean, you can get by a $20,000 retro reflectometer to go measure the brightness of the signs. Well, I'm not going to do that. I mean, to me, then you, or you can, <coughs> truthfully, this is another one is if you hire a 75 year old person to go and drive the roads at night and see if they can see the signs. Or it was something like that. It was an elderly <laughs> person. And that really was one of the requirements you could use. And to me, it's, it's we do, we flash the lights as we're going by. Years. <laughs> we have the spotlight as we're going by, and it's kind of just. You, you have to do your best determination. With the on it? What's that? You have to take a picture no, of the spotlight on it. No, you just kind of do. It's it's. There's no real enforcement that if you don't follow this, but you do have to do it every every other year. So that's why we do half county one year half. And then you also have the daytime surveys too. We do daytime surveys every year too. When you go down the road because you they, they wear, especially the ones that are facing the sun. Is that also with the trees happen. and the shrubs yeah. and everything else? Is it some Big of round bales. <laughs> I, yeah. I, did, I did one of those. Yeah. Ones. Yeah. <laughs> So, but you know that'll be happening. It hasn't started yet, but they're talking. Yeah, because yeah. so. the best thing is, is that as there's getting less and less daylight, you know, because if you did it during the normal, I mean, you'd be working from ten till five in the morning, and now if it, as like it's getting darker earlier, they almost could start at like seven earlier. and go through past midnight, and and then or start the computer work before dark and then go out and do it. So it kind of works better that way. Anyway, so, and other stuff we've got going on is probably um, I'm getting a lot of sandy right now. <laughs> um, we are mandated by the federal government to to do underwater bridge inspection. Just so you guys see that 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 well, you probably don't won't be an itemized item on it. But if we can monitor the low water when it's low water and see, but anything over two feet, you have to have scuba divers and monitor any of the major bridges that are more than two foot. So that is going to be through our consulting firm, which does our inspection now, that they're lining up scuba divers to do the major bridges that need that. Hang on. So wow. that is part of the whole federal requirement that they've been pushing. We haven't jumped, but we're going to so have to So do they do also it. look for wood turtles? No, I don't think they do. <laughs> you don't have any scuba divers on staff? No, no, we do not, and I hate to send the certification. The other final last thing I'll say is we're looking at equipment, and I did do this, in, and I brought this up here before, but we did, in Chickasaw, share with Howard and Winship, we did go on a venture and purchase a steel pile driving that we're sharing amongst those three counties. I did not jump here because I'm not sure how much we're really going to get into it at this point, but at some point I'm, I'm talking about Butler County and the main, because I don't know how many or too many counties to share that piece of equipment. My share over there as a third is forty thousand dollars. 
it's definitely a savings. Whether we would use it more or less, we, have, we don't know yet. And I can either get bought out or buy out or even buy into it with Floyd. Um, because the crane, which we have, the link belt crane, has to go down the road. There's no question in my mind. To certify the new certifications that have been in effect but pushed off until I think next year is going to cost anybody that's in the vicinity of that crane or operation of that crane has to you know, go through training and get certified. That's about 2000 bucks a person. And I think I don't know what it is to recertify every year. So to me, that crane is just unsafe. And that crane has been around. They first bought it at the old. It's, and it's not a very big crane compared to the one I had in Chickasaw, but that piece of iron needs to be sold. And it will be sold. Uh, there's no way we're going to replace that. And, and if this is a solution, you steel pile instead of wood pile and drive it with the steel, it's really amazing to just do it like this and to drive it down. And mm -hmm. They did the demo over there last week. So I'm really looking at if we need to start worrying about pile. It's going to be steel pile and it's going to be this piece. So $120,000 is what it costs. So we're shifting three over there to share it. But anyways, that's enough me talking. So we enjoy hearing you talk. <laughs> I just, I'll be happy when the concrete work is done. Like <laughs> I'll be happy, and I'm sure all the landlords on there will be happy too, because I mean they've been getting their. I, I give them credit; they've been getting their mail at the post office all summer long. Yeah. And it's been a, a pain, but you know to get that done will be great, and have that road done because that was. I was the only comment. I remember we went to the Farm Bureau meeting and I was like, well, when's that one going to get done? Me and Mark went there to the Farm Bureau like, well, that's the worst one. And we know. <laughs> so, that's all I got. Sorry. Okay. With that, I'll move to adjourn. Okay, second. We are adjourned.